Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. You put it so well. And when it comes to the issue of diabetes, it doesn't matter whether you're a Democrat or a Republican or an Independent or a Green Party member. What matters is that we all work together to focus on the estimated 3 million Americans with type 1 diabetes and their families. This is my seventh consecutive Children's Congress hearing. And I'm very grateful to Chairman Nelson for allowing me to continue this tradition. I want to join him in welcoming our distinguished witnesses and the more than 160 delegates to the Children's Congress who have traveled to Washington to tell us what it is like to have diabetes, just how serious it is, and why it is so important that we fund the research that is necessary to find a cure. I particularly want to give a special welcome to the delegate from Maine, 14-year-old Quinn Ferguson of Poland Spring, who will be speaking on our panel. As the founder and co-chair with Senator Jean, 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 Jean sorry, of New Hampshire of the Senate Diabetes Caucus, I have learned a lot about this disease and the heartbreak that it causes for so many American families as they await a cure. Diabetes is a lifelong condition that does not discriminate. It affects people of every age, race, and nationality. It is extremely, an extremely serious disease, and it costs the United States an estimated $245 billion a year and accounts for one out of every three Medicare dollars. Because of the serious complications associated with diabetes, medical costs for Americans with the disease are 2.3 times higher than those incurred by individuals without diabetes. Those statistics alone are overwhelming. But what motivates me to devote so much energy to this cause is meeting the children, the family, whose lives have been forever changed by diabetes. That is why it's so important that you've traveled here to Washington to tell your stories. You put a human face on the statistics. When I was meeting with Quinn and he showed me a scrapbook, he said that he felt that the day he was diagnosed at age eight with diabetes was his last full day of freedom. And that really touched me. So you help us focus on what Congress can do to understand and ultimately conquer this disease. While often associated with children, the fact is that 85% of those living with type 1 diabetes are adults, and many of them are seniors. An average individual with type 1 will have to take more than 50,000 insulin shots or infusions over his or her lifetime. The discovery of insulin was a landmark breakthrough. However, it is not a cure for diabetes, as you well know. Thankfully, there is some good news. Since I founded the Senate Diabetes Caucus, we have been successful in working together in a bipartisan manner to triple the funding for diabetes research. As a consequence, we've seen some encouraging breakthroughs, and we are on the threshold of a number of exciting discoveries. Advances in technology, like continuous glucose monitors, are helping patients control their blood glucose levels, which is key to preventing the complications from diabetes. We're also moving closer and closer to the goal of an artificial pancreas, which would revolutionize diabetes cure, care. 
Recent advances also include the development of new treatments that can stop or even reverse certain complications, such as some nerve damage and diabetic eye disease. I'm pleased to tell you that there is strong support in Congress for diabetes research funding, thanks in no small measure to the grassroots support provided by the JDRF volunteers. Earlier this year, we passed legislation to extend the Special Diabetes Program, which provides $150 million a year above and over the regular appropriations for type 1 diabetes research. This important program represents more than a third of our federal commitment to diabetes research. As such, it is critical to our efforts to find better treatments, a means of prevention, and ultimately what we are all seeking, and that is a cure for this devastating disease. Again, I thank the chairman for holding this important hearing, and it's wonderful to see you all here. You really inspire us to work even harder. Thank you.